Hello advanced algebra students, welcome back to another video lesson as we uh, begin to look at chapter 6, part B, we'll call it. I am sorry for one moment, I just got to make sure I can see everything on my screen. Here we go. And so as we get into this chapter... Six part B, we are looking at absolute value functions. Absolute value. So what does absolute value mean? Well, it can really be thought of in three different ways. It's given by this bracket, you know, absolute value of X is the distance from zero a certain quantity is on a number line. How far away from zero is it? We can also look at it as being equal to the value of X if x is greater than or equal to zero, or the opposite of x if it's less than zero, or that these two statements are true. I'm really not gonna focus a whole lot on those two. It's really more important that we, we utilize this strategy and get this in our mindset that when we are talking about absolute value, we are truly looking at the distance something is from zero on a number line. So the absolute value of three. How far away from zero is that? It's three, three units. Whereas the absolute value of negative three, how far away, what's the distance from zero? It's also three, right? That distance is the key ingredient to what we're really trying to focus on and help us solve some of these par particular problems. And because of that, um, really the absolute value is gonna always be positive. Right? I can't get the absolute value of some number n to be negative 10. It's not possible. Can't find a number that's a distance negative 10 units away from zero because our distance will always be positive. Now, what we can do is we can graph some of this. And we, we talked a little bit about absolute value graphs, but not a whole lot. And, but really the absolute value graph looks like a V. Um, this is that standard absolute value y equals absolute value of x, where the domain is all real numbers, because it'll go to the left as far as it can keep going. It'll go to the right, to infinity, and so on. And the range on this one is y is greater than or equal to zero. All the y values will keep going up. We do have a vertex right here at zero, zero, which means that's a minimum. We do have an axis of symmetry that also goes through there at that point, um, at that vertex point as well. Now the graph is, is a little bit helpful, uh, especially when we're going to try and solve some of these. But it's not particularly always something that we need to use because we can solve a lot of these with algebra. So on a calculator, um, there is that function down there, and I'll show you in just a moment where we can use the absolute value. We can also do some of the calculations right inside the graphing one as well if we wanted to. But what I want to look at more so is trying to solve an absolute value equation, the absolute value of x equals 4, by graphing it. And to do this, we need two unique steps. When we get to decimals, we need to say this first part is y, and then we need to say that second part is y. y equals absolute value of x, and y equals 4. And what we're going to be looking for then is the intersection points. Where do those points intersect? All right, so let's go into Desmos. Now we're back to the calculator one, the graphing one. And we've got y equals the absolute value of x. Enter y equals 4. So I've got red and blue. And I'm looking for the intersection points. And the answers are going to be the x values, the x values, negative 4 and positive 4. So what that represents is that x could equal 4 or x could equal negative 4 because these are the numbers that have a distance of 4 away from the 0 on a number line, so to speak, or away from 0. All right, so we can use a graph to find those intersection points. Same thing here with our second one, right? Let's solve by graphing x plus 3 equals 7. Take a moment to pause the video and see what you get. 
Okay, so x plus 3. So now I'm going to change this one to y equals absolute value of x plus 3. And I want to see the ones that are 7 away. Where does y equal 7? I'm going to change my graph. So x is at negative 10 or x is at 4. Negative 10 or 4. So we can say that x could equal negative 10 or that x could equal 4. And if you wanted to you know, check those and test them, you could plug those back in. Negative 10 plus 3 is negative 7. And how far away is negative 7 on the number line? It's 7 away from 0. Same thing if I plug in a 4. So that's how we can use graphing to help us if they're asking us to solve by graphing. But we can also eventually learn how to do these by hand. And in order to do that, uh, we need to go through this series of questions. So what number am I thinking of? Something that is eight units from zero. Well, that could be two numbers, right? It could be eight, because eight is eight away from zero, or it could be negative eight because negative eight is also eight units away from zero. How about the next one? Four units from negative one. Well, if I go four units from negative one in the positive direction, we're gonna get to three. But if I go in the negative direction, we end up with negative five. All right, so this one we were comparing not to zero, but how many units away from negative one were they? The last one, three units away from three. Well, one of those, if we go in the positive direction, is six. If we go backwards in the negative direction, we're at zero, right? So both of those numbers are three units away from three. And if you can start to think about that distance approach, how far away are certain numbers away, you know, from a certain thing. It helps us to create equations and solve. So where and how do I get these equations? Like where do they come from? Well, the absolute value part comes from this, right? Eight units away from zero. X plus eight equals zero. All right, and so what you're actually gonna see here is that I've got them backwards. So let me erase that. We've got it a little bit backwards. What I'm looking for is things that are eight units. So we wanted to equal eight. And what are we adding to x? We're adding nothing to x in this case because it's not anywhere away, right? It's all related back to zero. So we want whatever distance we get in here to be eight away. So if we look at the second one, we want something that's going to equal four because we want whatever we get in here to be four units away. Well, we want them to be away from negative one, which ironically means we have to add the one. Why do we add one? Well, if we were to solve, the goal here would be to subtract one, right? I would have to subtract the one from both sides eventually. And so we're going to use the opposite three units away. So I want whatever I get as a distance to equal three, because I want it three units away. If it's positive three here, I'm going to use subtracting three inside the absolute value, because eventually I have to add three in both directions. Okay, and this is how we can kind of use this information perhaps to help us in a sense solve. So then we get to, well, what does that mean for solving? Like, how do I set these things up to help them solve? And in this example, it wants us to solve the absolute value of 2x plus 5 equals 6. So we're looking for things that are going to help us get a distance that is 6 away. And what I tend to try and do is think about covering this up, right? 
Once I've got the absolute value part all by itself, the absolute value of y would equal 6. That means this y value could equal positive 6, or that y value could equal negative 6. Okay, whatever I get in here has to be 6 units away. So whatever is in there has to equal 6 or it has to equal negative 6. So I then uncover that box and remember that I really don't have y. What I have is 2x plus 5. So I'm going to replace the y with what I covered up. 2x plus 5 equals 6 or the 2x plus 5 equals negative 6. And now we have two algebraic problems that we're trying to solve separately. Subtract 5, and I get 2x equals 1, or x could equal 1 half. In the second one, if I subtract 5, I get 2x equals negative 11, or x equals negative 11 halves. And I can leave it as improper. Negative 11 halves, negative 5.5 either way. Right? So I cover up, and I'm trying to just remember that whatever I get for an answer in here has to be 6 units away. And so I'm either looking to get a 6 in here, because I know 6 is 6 units away, or I'm looking to somehow get negative 6 in there. So then I replace it to solve. One more example. Similar concept, similar idea here. All right, we, we have this absolute value of 3x plus 8 plus another 2 on the outside of it equals 20. We really can't do anything until we isolate a square root. We need to isolate that all by itself on one side. So I need to first subtract 2. Absolute value of 3x plus 8 has to equal 18. All right, now once again, if I wanted to, I would cover this up. Imagine it's not there and say that the absolute value, whatever I get in here, has to be 18, or whatever I get in here has to be negative 18. So it has to be 18 or it has to equal negative 18. What do I have inside of there? The 3x plus 8. The 3x plus 8. And so we use these two equations to solve. We subtract the 8, which means 3x is 10. We divide by 3, which means x equals 10 thirds. And that's the exact answer. So we leave it just like that. We would subtract 8, which means 3x equals negative 26. We divide by 3, and x equals negative 26 over 3. So that's how we can start to solve those absolute value equations. We've got to isolate the absolute value so that it gets on one side by itself. And then we try to remember whatever we're getting inside, whatever we're looking for, has to equal a distance away that's 18. So I either need the inside to equal 18 or the inside to equal negative 18, because that'll still give me a distance away from zero. If you have any questions on how to do some of these, please make sure that you do indeed reach out. Otherwise, until next time, everyone, stay safe.